here from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with some of the Nerdarchy guys. I'm Ryan. I'm Ted. So uh, we had a viewer request from Random Me. He wanted to know, he wanted to know how we would handle uh, monsters as player characters, roughly, <laughs> roughly. So well, there's there's a couple different angles to look at. Number one, anything that's you know size medium and humanoid can probably be easily converted into a um, playable a, race. A playable race w- without any problem. And you know, I'm actually kind of in the process of working working through that list to uh to be able to throw up on nerdarchy.com. Uh we've, we've got some things that, you know, uh are already already up there. Um, uh, you know, and I've got I've got a list of what I'm working on. But then there's the other side of things about well, it's humanoid, but it's bigger or there's the things that aren't humanoid. So, so, and the other thing too is like, yeah, you just, there's going to be different kinds of challenges for a monster player character, both socially and like you said, what if it's not humanoid? You know, like a door could be a challenge mm. <laughs> when you have no hands mm. to turn the knob, right. you know. But you know, going, we can look at too, we can look at previous editions of Dungeons and Dragons and how they've handled it. Uh-huh. Um, or you know, you can really simplify it and boil it down to like, are you playing a monster? game you know because that makes it real easy like if all the players are going to be monster and they're going to be around the same power level you can literally just be like all right here's the monster from the book right and now this we can start here this is this is what you are we have to figure out what this means you can handle and then we'll just start you know adding levels on top of stuff you know yeah maybe like your first level is level one and you adventure for it you know if you have an ogre a minotaur and something else you know but, you know, to me, that's kind of so, – so it, it's a, it depends a lot on what kind of game. Now, if you're talking about taking monsters out of the monster manual and introducing them into a party, it becomes a lot more difficult. Absolutely. So, you know, and, and if they're a thing that is, you know, strides above the power level of your average PC, say if somebody wants to play that Minotaur or whatever, you know. So. Right. This is the point where you can go, okay, well, you know – this is the monster that your player wants to play. This is the level of the party. Or, I mean, the way you, what I really mean to say is this is the level of the party. Here's a list of the monsters that are appropriate for you to actually play with right. that party. Right. Wh- which is almost like the ECL system from third edition. Yeah, it is, yeah it's very much in character with that. We're like, you know, to, to play that monster humanoid, you might be giving up uh, one through one to four levels of, of character levels to be able to have that thing that has that massive strength or reach or, you know, or, or a goring attack that it has. Well, yeah. I mean, because if, if, if it's a monster and it's already got hit dice, well, each one of those hit dice are almost equivalent to a level mm-hmm. for the most part. Right. Yeah. And so you might actually, a lot of times uh, I like to see it where like the monster almost is a little bit underpowered compared to the rest of the party, mm-hmm. you know, and it's almost like a tax that they have to pay for being that thing right to be the special unicorn character and that's kind of the way third edition third edition treated it um you know i'm one i'm i'm very much for playing you know those those odd races playing the monster i I just i find it's it's a role-playing challenge and it's pretty cool to get to play something that's just not right out of the player's handbook but you know with third edition there's so much like ecl of okay well you've got three levels where you, you know, where you get nothing because you've got all these other powers or other things. So therefore the equivalent character level, you know, puts you here. And it's so much easier to be like, okay, well, you know, in a 15th level party, you can play a Minotaur, but you've got like eight hit dice. So most things are just going to kill you that you're going to be fighting. So you're not going to be able to survive as a Minotaur, you know, unless you've done something, you know, really special to, to, to make it, to make it last. Well, if you're a 50, if the party is 15th level and you're playing a Minotaur, then you'd probably have to level the Minotaur up at least a little bit. Well, right. I, don't, I, I was, I was throwing numbers out. I don't remember. It's been so long since I've, since I've looked at it, but I know that there is a, a massive number of hit die difference between what a, minotaur has versus what the equivalent party level would be when you've got your full minotaur abilities versus what the party would be i think it's a little easier in fifth edition though because um because of bounded accuracy right 
nothing le- nothing levels the way it did in previous editions you know, the, the the bonuses are all a lot smaller mm-hmm. like th- that's the same reason why you know less powerful monsters are viable at higher much higher levels now mm-hmm. so i think that kind of lends itself to those monsters now being playable mm-hmm. you know and then then there's certain things that just aren't going to make much of a difference like you know like your orcs your hobgoblins your gnolls like there's they're only marginally stronger than your players mm-hmm. right? and you can you can literally just do you know, you can literally just do a penalty to to the XP and just make them wait, delay them a level, you know, or, you know, if they have, if they actually have two hit dice, drop them down to one hit die as, as the as the class. So they actually start off a little bit weaker than what they traditionally would get. Mm-hmm. So you're like, with, with like a knoll or an orc, I would totally just say, all right, let me, let me just come up with, you know, what they would be in in fifth edition and have it just be all right you can play it at first level you don't have any racial hit dice you have your racial abilities just like you would have for well if they're in line with the other things out of the player's handbook yeah that's uh-huh. pretty much yeah the yeah that's where i would go yeah well i, I guess the, the hardest part is with like a lot of the monster races is they have abilities that can come into play often that are yeah they're superior a lot of times they're going to be superior than to the player races you know you know like anything where they can use it on you know basically every round of every encounter is a little bit it's a little a little bit powerful compared to your standard races mm-hmm. right. you know some of the things that they need a short rest to recharge it or you know they need a long rest for that thing to happen again so know. like so like that might be the compromise like you know if you maybe you know you're the brute cat you you're a brute monster maybe you can you only let them use that once per encounter or or once per short rest mm. you know much like you know um you know, the dragonborn with their breath weapon, right? Or you know, or some of or the uh, other races that get spells. You can also, you know, you can also take you know a portion of their abilities now because it's kind of been done already, and stick them into a feat and yes. be like, you can unlock this when you hit fourth level. So you could do that, or even too what you see with the uh, the tiefling, or tiefling, however you say. Um, where basically they've leveled some of their yeah, spellcasting like, abilities. You could level their monster abilities too. It's like, well, you're an adolescent of your race or something. Yeah, like that, absolutely. You know? Yeah, well, that's one way of doing it. But like, so there's some there's some creatures though that get a lot of things like the Thrykeen, where they get a lot of psionic powers and they get then, but they physically have a lot of stuff Imposing, as well. Yeah. So then, like, you know, the the nice way with you know, if you go the no magic route, you go, oh well, you know, yeah, you have to work up to that sonic stuff. You're not awakened yet. Right. And then it, it kind of evens that the, out. The threat cream, the threat cream will be will be a bit of a challenge. Um, it's probably going to be a you know, you get this, you've got some scaled abilities, and at fourth level you can take that feat, which will allow yeah. to unlock the rest. Yeah, and even then, it's still it's still going to be pretty potent because what they get from being the quote unquote psionic package, it's probably more powerful than any other feat that's there. So I have to I have to really look at it and see how I'm going to pare things down. Well, Maybe. it's those abilities could be per short rest or per long rest if you have to like de level what the monster version because the the thing about the monster version of a given thing is it it's only going to last that one encounter, whereas the PC version no, of absolutely. that monster yeah. is there all the time. Yeah. Until yeah, so, you can, unless you kill them all. So Nate the Nerdark and I are gonna probably put our heads together and try to figure out, you know, what it's gonna be. Form the Nerdarchy Chimera, if you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Atten. Atten. It'll be an end. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's one ugly end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think there's such thing as a hot Atten. Are, are you sure? Uh, yeah. maybe. Maybe. If you're if you're an Etten and you think you're good looking, let us put let your us. hate mail to Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're below. a sexy Etten and you know it. Yeah, that's right. So we've done several we've done several videos on monsters as PCs, monstrous humanoids, monstrous races. You know, I, I think for the most part, like our group likes that stuff in in um, in doses. You know, uh, yeah. No, I know it's like a, a super hot button out there for other groups. Some people absolutely cannot tolerate it. Stand it. I've had GMs don't that don't even like demi humans. Yeah, well, I, I've had GMs that won't let you. Yeah, they, they would not allow anything that was non, you know, non canon, non core yeah. book. Um, you know, and especially like saying Pathfinder, like you had you have stats for everything to be PCable as well. Uh, you know, again with like ECL and whatever. So. Yeah, I'm not sure what version of that they're going to bring back. It, what'll be interesting, there was the Savage Species as well, which was 
weird to say the least. I mean, you had to like grow up into your your monster. Well, again, it was like a leveling mechanic. Yeah, kind of, right. Yeah. Which is, I think, where the where the the whole I think ECL kind of really uh, got born into was with the Savage Species book. Yeah, did that come first? I think so. Well, you know, I mean, in this edition, it in a way it kind of makes sense because like your first three levels are very much apprenticing. You're an apprentice monster. So yeah, yeah, I mean, it kind of it kind of works. But I guess what Savage Species where it got weird was like you had dead levels for, for like hit dice, yeah. and, and like yeah, you might that, have to that's... go to level twelve to get your eight hit well, dice. Well, but worth. that was uh, also wholly symptomatic of third uh, third edition. There was a lot of dead leveling just in the game as a whole. So yes, then but, you combine it when you get something that's outside but, of the norm. But with, with every with every level with a class, you were getting. <laughs> A hit die. You were getting skills. Your BA. You know your BA. Whereas with the the ECL, you know actual character level advancement in Savage Species, there was honestly a level where you would not get a hit die. You could be you could be twelfth character level, but only have eight hit dice. That's the thing that that that's the thing I was saying with the Minotaur is you could you you were significantly hit point wise weaker than the party because of the other abilities you got to get well here's the other thing too like why do you want to play a monster like this is this is an important question if if you want to bring monsters into your game like what is it why you want to be the monster like if you just want to do more than everybody else then you you know which sometimes that is just the case that a player just is like okay how do i power game this even more i know i'm a minotaur Uh, in that in that case you know you, you know good luck trying to get one over on the gm um you know if if for, from my standpoint, I like to play things that are different. I like to have a, a unique situation, and I, and I like to play races that haven't seen before, haven't played before. Um, I think it's a, it's a lot more fun than playing, you know, humans, elves, and dwarves all the time. The Humanoids Handbook was fun for that because, really, Humanoids Handbook just opened up a bunch of monsters for you to play, and they said – and they just hand-waved a bunch of stuff and said, well – you don't get it <laughs> you know you're a minotaur but you're a first level fighter minotaur yeah you know or a barbarian minotaur you just have a die 12 that's right. your hit points. as opposed to having that um you know 18 strength that the the minotaur is guaranteed to have you only got a plus four so if you you know rolled well hey great but if you rolled crappy well you're a weaker minotaur yeah. you know yeah, and and second edition really had that that offset of okay, well, you were probably going to get more in minuses than you were getting in pluses, or at least e- equal. So, with fifth, they don't have minuses. So there's no there's no counterbalancing. So you can't say, well, okay, well, I'll give you a plus four strength, but I'll give you a minus six to charisma. Uh, I mean, unless they introduce it later. I mean, mm. in the in the NPC monsters, they do actually put minuses in. Mm. But you know that's for NPCs. Do you treat right. the players different? Is the question. I, I, I'm absolutely. No, my my standpoint. I'm I'm absolutely treating you know every race that I create to you know kind of fit the templates that they've released so far. Nothing gets minuses to stats. So that's everything kinda... has to be plus good. Yeah. So, so well, that, that's... but I guess the I guess the problem there is like if the thing is really good, like you know it would have a much higher strength. Mm. Then does it then you know justify go breaking that mold to go. All right, you're only going to, you know, you got a plus three to strength, which is huge in this edition, but you're going to get a couple of minuses now. You know, but I mean, the like, logic of the edition, like the standard is a plus two. We haven't seen anything PCable. Uh, well, know. yeah. You know, I've, I've we got, also haven't seen an ogre put play, PC. Well, I, I don't think I would allow, I would maybe allow a half ogre, but no. Uh, well, actually, the Goliath would be a good template if you're going to build your half ogre. I would look at that pretty heavily, and no, I've I've got ideas for what what I plan on to do with some of the more more challenging races. But I mean, you know, until you get to like you know half ogre or ogre sized, you know, you can just say, well, okay, well, you know, all right, the player a player character is supposed to be an exceptional individual, but it is not necessarily an exceptional in comparison to. You know, all of your kind. Unless you know. you're a minotaur, then you're the unexceptional. Yeah, you're the, the disexceptional. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not going to be able to, to make a, a minotaur, a size large creature, a play a playable race. You know, I've got ideas to to do a, essentially like a minotaur kin. You know, right. so it's your size medium. You have some of the Goliath like abilities. Um, you know, so it's it's. I've got ideas for what I want to do. I haven't I haven't fleshed it all out yet, but it, it's you're going to be size medium. You're not going to be. Yeah, as soon as something goes to be the size large, like it breaks, you know, (laughs) so it breaks the logic of the game and your your head. So, 
What about the mini Minotaur? No, just... <laughs> no I'm thinking of back to the video we did about um, um, tricks. Mm. A Minotaur that's like three foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but again, you could lump that into the, the fourth level feat where like it gives him a plus one the sh strength or con and he's now size large and some you know put package some of those other abilities that the standard that, minotaur would get that's possible doesn't really do that much for you to be honest with you though like being large yeah it's uh, natural reach though right no, which, don't no, know. Don't it's like, even if you do have reach though the attack of opportunities only happen when you leave combat not coming in Right, right. Well, no, but there are there still are circumstances where people are going to draw off attacks of violence. I, I just I don't I don't feel it's it's necessary. Cause I, I don't I don't feel the need to give people you know large large playable races. You know, as as we we're talking about with the the earlier, it would be madness. Know. It'd be like having a race that could fly mm, fast. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really. I'm just saying, like you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna play a monster, you know, do a monster game where everybody just takes a monster out of the player's handbook or out of the monster manual. Sorry, um, that are around the same same you know power level and play a monster game. Yeah, you know? yeah, I agree. Look, like that that's actually where I was going when we started this video is look monster at, squad. Just yeah. be monster squad. Look at hit dice and max up like maybe a, a range of give or take a die. You know, or if it's something that has a lot of abilities, that's going to change everything. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you, you know, you could look at the CRs and just try and keep them, you know, in scale, in scale with each other. And then you could do the monster game. And, but I think it's, dude, it's like, it's like Star Wars playing Jedi. You, if either everyone's a Jedi or nobody's, nobody's a Jedi. Jedi. Yeah. Yep. And so in this, everyone's a monster or no one's a monster. Yeah. You know, but if you're out there looking for monster games, just, you know, keep your eyes on nerdarchy.com. Um, at least for the time being. Uh, You're going to run a monster game? No. Uh, I said, look, we don't run games on nerdarchy.com. Uh, well, I don't know. Didn't he say we're looking for a monster game? Well, I, said, I said, if you're looking for monsters, <laughs> we got monsters your game. for your game. Hey, buddy, look we got monsters. To... We're in a trench coat. We got <laughs> monsters. We got monsters. Hey, right here. Yeah. Um, you know, Is that look, a minotaur look, in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? Well, uh, just look at the nerdarchy.com. Nerd, nerd I've, you know, I've already got a handful of uh, monster uh, player races already up there. And there's 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 more to come. And uh, Art Wood has been throwing up uh, PDFs for us. He's been turning the stuff he do. He's been turning into PDFs, and we have to put we're probably going to put it on Reddit. And it, it hasn't gone up yet. There, our Reddit guy is falling behind the slacker. Yeah. And hey, guys, I tried to get Ted to run a monster game for you, but it just didn't work. So, yeah, yeah, I got I got so many things I'm trying to run right now. Twist his arm. Yeah, give me a few it. months to get my schedule clear, Chicken and then we'll wing. see what happens. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> a few months, no one's even going to remember. But with that, you can. Uh, Drop your feelings about the uh, players as monsters in the comments below. You can like, you can share, you can subscribe. Uh, let's see. Since Ted's already shamelessly plugged nerdarchy.com, I'll just say you can hang out with us over on Facebook. And uh, you can uh, go support our Patreon account so that we can keep bringing you great content and let us get some better gear. Until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.